we are looking to end with a bang and that everybody should be willing to stay. Um, it's my honor to present or to open up the discussion of the finalists or the opportunity of the finalists uh, for the Laureate, the Laureate Miller Rupee Award. Um, and we are going to, through videos, present all three of the finalists. But before we actually present them, we would like to just give one shout out and a recognition and acknowledge the 2023 winner, which was the Friends of Liberia. Um, we really appreciate uh, the kind of work and their commitment was outstanding. Um, and in continuing in that tradition, we launched again the, um, the Rupee Award. Um, with that process, there were five uh, or uh, five groups that actually did present for consideration. Um, there was a mixed panel of um, NPCA staff and um, the standing committee for groups. So it was a mixed group. Um, and we they were voted on or they were analyzed based on a very specific criteria. Next slide, please. And the selection uh, selection committee considered three major points. How well did the group's activity promote the third goal? What was the impact of the activity on the community served? How well and how well does the activity serve as a model or inspiration for others? So with, I do not want to take up a lot of time. I just would like to, you know, just for, for you to understand what we were looking at. And now it's your time. We brought it down to three. Now it's for you as, as individuals to vote based on what you see here. Which one do you think deserves to have the honor of the 2024 Rupee Award winner? So without further ado, we're going to present the videos for all three. The first is the Friends of Malaysia. Um, and um, again, it is an honor for um, to be the one that's opening this up. Uh, Oren, can you start the video for the Friends of Malaysia? Hello, my name is Don Lovett. I'm a board member of the MPCA affiliate Friends of Malaysia, or FOM. I've been selected to present FOM's Lorette Miller Rupee Award nominee video. FOM is an orphan affiliate group. That means that there are no longer our Peace Corps volunteers serving in Malaysia to replenish our ranks. Our first Peace Corps volunteers arrived in 1962. These volunteers actually were posted to three different entities the Federation of Malaya, the British Crown Colony of Sarawak, and the British Crown Colony of North Borneo. In 1963, these united to form the country of Malaysia. All of the volunteers became Malaysian PCVs. In the end, well over 3,000 Peace Corps volunteers had served in Malaysia. The last volunteers in Malaysia completed their service in 1983. There have been no new RPCVs from Malaysia for over 40 years. FOM currently has slightly over 250 members. Despite our small size, our commitment to serving the communities of our former host country remains strong. Since FOM's founding three decades ago, we have donated almost 25,000 US dollars in support of projects in Malaysia. FOM members are concerned deeply about healthcare in Malaysia. Our support of several healthcare initiatives was highlighted in our Rupee Award application. And our greatest concern has been breast cancer awareness. In Malaysia, breast cancer is the leading cause of death among women. As in many other countries, treatment of breast cancer in Malaysia is concentrated in major hospitals in large cities. Low-income women, especially those in rural areas, are less likely to be screened or treated until it is too late. FOM's most enduring and impactful relationship has been with the Sandakan Pink Ribbon Group. Funds that FOM contributed to this group were used to acquire breast models that are being used to teach women what they are looking for when they do a breast self-examination. At last count, over 15,000 women and schoolgirls have used these models to learn about the process of breast self-examination. And perhaps a few lives have been saved too. FOM also supports the Breast Cancer Awareness Welfare Association of Malaysia. This organization provides free clinical breast examinations. They take their mobile clinic to rural areas where healthcare access is limited and also to the urban poor from marginalized communities. In addition, FOM supports the National Cancer Society of Malaysia, 
we specifically support its program to provide free housing for rural residents who travel to the capital city of Kuala Lumpur for outpatient cancer treatment. FOM also supports other healthcare related initiatives. For example, we have supported NAS Kids, an organization that teaches young women how to sew while at the same time providing them with an income. How is this connected with healthcare? NAS Kids specifically had requested funds to support the sewing of masks during the pandemic. FOM funds purchased the materials and also compensated the young women who did the sewing. Almost a thousand masks were produced with the FOM funds. These masks were distributed to elementary schools in economically depressed towns. Recently, FOM has supported the Ku Lingyin Art Therapy Academy. Our funds provide free access to art therapy programs for low-income youth experiencing trauma or depression. Thank you for allowing me to share with you how members of the Friends of Malaysia remain devoted to the communities of our host country through our support of healthcare initiatives in Malaysia, in particular, those related to breast cancer. We are a small group that is motivated by our enduring Peace Corps spirit and our love for a country that we briefly got to call home. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciated uh, the video. We're going to move to our second um, nominee, the Friends of Paraguay. Friends of Paraguay, or FOP, is a country of service affiliate group of NPCA that was established in 1987 by a group of RPCVs during the 20th anniversary of the Peace Corps Paraguay program. For over 10 years, FOP has been offering grant money to Paraguayan organizations, including both small community-based organizations as well as national nonprofits. After small operating expenses, including maintaining a post office box and a website, the vast majority of our funds go to supporting our grants. This year, we are committed to giving out at least $3,000 in grant money to organizations with strong applications. Last year, we gave out three $1,000 grants after evaluating a pool of six applications. This is a market increase of only four years ago when we gave out one $500 grant to our only applicant. Two recent examples of some real success stories. Uh, we made some early grants to a foundation called Super Kids Foundation, Super Niños, as it's called in Paraguay. And uh, we funded them for, for four years uh, before we stopped. Uh, they're a successful Paraguayan NGO that was established by a, an RPCB in central Paraguay. Uh, it's, this organization is managed by Paraguayan young adults and is very dynamic. Um, the Friends of Paraguay specifically supported kids teacher programs which focused on child leadership uh, and uh, focused on de development among hundreds of new very needy kids in central Paraguay. Uh, the focus that was on literacy, uh, li life skills and leadership for these kids. Um, more recently uh, Friends of Paraguay has made two grants uh, in 21, 2021 and 2022 to OPADES it's a Paraguayan organ, uh, NGO uh, in English. It stands for Paraguayan Organization for Conservation and Sustainable Development. Specifically, the Friends of Paraguay grants have focused on developing a program of what's called Guardians of the Park uh, for Ibaqui National Park in Paraguay. Uh, this program involves adolescents in programs and provides training and guidance and team building efforts. And the focus is on the sustainability of the park and they're creating they're focusing on the younger generation because they're going to be around a long time and they're going to be allies of protection of the park and once again like in, in the case of uh, our previous grants to super kids this, this one with opata supports youth youth as agents of change and i think that's bodes well for the future uh paraguay but i think one of the aspects of a uh, of the friends of paraguay uh, grant program is the evolution of both our organization as a grant giving uh, organization and also the types of organizations that have come forward requesting funds over the years. Uh, our relationship has evolved 
um, because the organizations have developed and become more so sophisticated, more mature, uh, and we have become partners with them. We have been become partners in terms of looking at what needs are in the community. And also we have become partners in terms of working with organizations that are new to the grant world. And we have assisted in the development um, of their abilities to, to ask for a grant. And so we realized that in addition to support that we might uh, be able to provide, uh, we also have left an organization that is in a much better place to request uh, resources elsewhere. So um, we, we've grown up on both sides, both ourselves and Friends of Paraguay, and also the organizations that we have developed uh, relationships with. And it has been very, very rewarding. Uh, and I'm sure it's only going to get better as we go forward. This year, we are thrilled to announce two new developments. The board has voted to include an additional memorial grant in the name of an RPCV, the funds of which will come from an external organization. And our membership voted to include a Paraguayan host country national on the Board of Friends of Paraguay, who, as a member of the Grants Committee, will support our efforts in both advertising our grant opportunities in Paraguay and serving in the selection of grant recipients. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. We're going to now head to the third video, uh, the third finalist, which was with the Peace Corps Alumni Foundation for Philippine Development. Greetings, my name is Justin Tabor, and I am the current president of the Peace Corps Alumni Foundation for Philippine Development, or PCAFPD. On behalf of our US-based Board of Trustees and our Italy team in the Philippines, we want to thank you for considering PCAFPD for the 2024 Laurent Miller Group Award for Outstanding Community Service. PCAFPD celebrated its 40th anniversary in 2023. As you spend the next few minutes learning about our history, programs, and impacts, we hope you will come to share our enthusiasm for all that PCAFPD has accomplished. PCAFPD celebrated its 40th anniversary in 2023. I'm going to hand the presentation over to our longest serving board member, a former PCAFPD president and an original 1961 Philippines RPCV, Maureen Carroll, to share some of our history. Maureen. PCAFPD was incorporated in 1983. The concept behind the program developed out of a series of small group discussions by former volunteers who were trying hard to figure out a way that they could uh, create opportunities for return volunteers and staff to continue to support and be engaged in Philippine development from afar. They decided to establish a scholarship program for Filipino students who had great potential, academic and uh, community service potential, but no money in order to pursue uh, degrees. At this point, what we're most proud of is that we now have a group of program beneficiaries, young people who secured their degrees through our support, and who are grateful for that and have stepped forward to administer the program on our behalf. By the end of the 2024-2025 academic year, PCAFPD will have graduated over 300 scholars, a number we are very proud of. As part of our 40th anniversary celebration, we conducted an impact study with our program alumni to learn what effect scholarship might have had on their lives. In this first pie chart, we see that without PCAFPD's support, over 70% of our scholars would not have had the opportunity to obtain their degree. In the next visual, we see one of our favorite impacts. Since graduating with their degree, over half of our scholars have paid forward their studies by supporting at least one other degree, usually another member of their family. Based on scholar responses, we estimate that for every scholarship we award, a second Filipino has a chance to study. Finally, our data shows that when comparing the economic standing of scholars and their families before, during, and after their studies, we see scholars moving into higher and higher income brackets, a sign of positive development. Data can only really tell part of our story, so I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Aries Azilo, who can share a little bit about what being a PCAFPD scholar is like. My, my nephew, why are you jumping? What's happening? I passed the scholarship and I was really jumping. I was jumping with so much joy near mm -hmm. the tricycle station and everybody else was like clapping their hands. And then my uncle, Kuya Rico, told me, Oi, Toto, you can go to college mm -hmm. now. So I wouldn't be where I am now if I yeah. hadn't got the scholarship. That was the only scholarship that I applied for nothing else. 
To complement our flagship program, the PCAFPD Board of Directors set aside $10,000 to conduct a five-year pilot of a granting program. They recognize that while scholarship is one way to achieve our mission, that human development extends beyond the classroom. In four years, the program has provided $8,000 to fund projects like technology education for Indigenous youth, an environmental after-school program, and multiple projects supported by Peace Corps volunteers. To share her experiences as an RPCV and a PCAFPD grantee, I'd like to introduce one of our first grantee winners, Emma Sarkel. Emma. I'm happy to say that the grant really had a great positive impact, not only in terms of the immediate effect on increasing our patients' um, confidence and knowledge around childbirth and early parenthood, but also in a wider scale across our social media platforms, um, reaching thousands um, of community members um, with the educational content. Our Filipino partners have named themselves the Itoloi team. The Itoloi team and PCAFPD work hand in hand to make sure that our scholars and grantees have what they need to be successful. We are proud of this model that both mimics the cooperative nature of the Peace Corps, but also the special relationship between our two countries. To share her motivations to join this endeavor, I'd like to introduce you to our former scholar and now Itoloi team member, Rachel Briones. Rachel. I really wanted to do fast forward what I got um, from the scholarship. I think this is really the best way for me to show my gratitude to the organization and also it's just really um, it feels good to know that you're making a difference in someone else's lives. The future of PCAFPD depends on new RPCVs like our board member Nick Spalt who returned from service in 2019. I was able to get a scholar from uh, the island a scholarship it had a profound impact on my service probably the most impactful thing I wanted to continue doing that work and so once I completed my service, I joined the board that we need to uh, improve engagement with Return Peace Corps volunteers, our donor community, and the volunteering community at large. And I think that this award would really help uh, expand that engagement, uh, get folks involved, and really help deliver uh, additional impact to the Philippines. If this presentation has inspired you to support PCAFPD, we invite you to follow the QR code on the screen to our website. On behalf of our PCAFPD family, both in the US and the Philippines, we want to thank you for your time and consideration for the 2024 Laura Miller Roop Award for Outstanding Community Service. Maraming Salama. Thank you very much to all three of the nominees. Um, uh, we're in the interest of time, I'm just going to jump right in. Um, the voting is open for two weeks from September 14th to September 27th. We encourage everyone on the call or any other RPCV um, to vote and all NPCA members can vote once. Uh, your email is required, but only used to verify that you are an NPCA member. The winner will be announced in October and will be awarded a $500 cash prize. Um, you can vote at the uh, on the link there. The link will also be put in the chat, and you can also see uh, the link if you go to the to the website. Um, if you'd like to see the videos again, um, they will also be um, available on our website. Um, and I believe that the, li the link will be put into, or the information will be put into our next newsletter. So without any ado, I'm going to pass it over to Dan to wrap things up. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for taking the time to watch these great videos.